This is an Affinity Publisher tutorial by Robert Chalmers. Adding text in Publisher is the, the theme of this uh, video and we'll go through on slides first followed by an actual video of the screen as I proceed. To learn the basics of using text in your Affinity Publisher documents including adding text creating columns of text, importing text, and flowing text from one frame to another. We'll take each of these in turn, and to start with, the different types of frames you can use in Publisher, the tools to create frames, there's the Type tool, the Frame tool, and the Shape tool. They're located in the toolbox on the left-hand bar. Frames can be created and used as placeholders. That's a frame without content. Text and images in Affinity Publisher reside within a frame. When you place images or text in Publisher, a frame is created automatically for that content. If you try and place these um, text or images into a document without a frame, you will run into problems. So be aware of that, you need frames to hold these things. When you want to include text, the frame indicates the area where text is to be shown. Text frames have small boxes in the upper left and lower right corners, which can be used to connect frames together, so text can flow from one frame to another. See the magnifying glass in the next image. Well, I guess they're not actually small boxes either. They're more like little triangles. And they're just above the upper, uh, just below the upper left and just above the lower right. For images, the frame can be used to crop or mask parts of the image. And this can be a very powerful feature as you get more used to using this. Here's some examples of frame placement. You can see the top one is a text frame. You can drag that out into the black area outside of your document just to make sure you've got the right thing or to, or to hold it there for a moment. And then you can drag it across and place it in your document in a selected area. You can resize it. You can do all sorts of things. If it's in that left hand black area, it won't come up on the document and the document won't try and use it. This can be a very useful feature. An image frame the next one down, by default that has the X in it. So if you see one of these in your document, as you see there, a frame with an X across it, you know it's a image placeholder. That X does not appear in the finished document, by the way. The next one down is also an image frame or a shape frame. That one there happens to be a circle and there are other shapes you can use. And as I say there, frames can be created outside the canvas and dragged into place where needed. The image frames show place markers to indicate image frames, unlike text frames which don't have those markers. And you can see the magnifying glass in the top text frame highlighting where the frame links are. Now to add text to a frame, you add text with the Frame Text tool. With option 1, you select the Frame Text tool in the toolbar. With the Frame Text tool selected, drag in the document window to add a text frame to the document, or click in an existing text frame to add text. And sometimes the little cursor will be hidden right up in the top left hand corner if it's already a blank frame and you'll have to note your text size uh, and be aware if you've got a very small text size and you've got an A4 page, that cursor will be hard to see up there. Next, choose text, insert filler text and you can fill the frame with placeholder text. It's just random nonsense text. You can set that text so you can edit it or not edit it. Depends on what you're doing. Option two, with the text cursor in the text frame, type your text. As simple as that. You could type an entire book by just opening up frames and typing in your text. 
text will wrap once it reaches the right edge of the text frame. Dragging a corner of the text frame scales the text object and wraps the text within it. If the text frame is too small, a red plus appears in the lower right corner of the frame, indicating overset text. The text doesn't fit, in other words. Reposition the, te reposition the text object with the selection tool in the toolbox. See the spyglass in the third frame after this, the magnifying glass. And again, it's not so much a red plus sign appearing in the lower right hand corner, but those text link triangles turn red. And you can format your text with the options in the properties manual, uh, panel, of course. Here's an example. Drag out a text frame and begin typing. Or, as in the next frame, insert filler text. Now you can see in there that in the top left hand corner of that top frame, there is a little bit of text typed. Hello, I think I've typed in there, just to let you know where your cursor will appear. That's probably your normal method, unless you're dragging text into it um, and inputting, placing text from another document. Perhaps you've written your book in Word and you now want to put it into Publisher. Text insert filler text, that shows you how to do it. If you want to put filler, which is just that lorem ipsum text that you see nowadays, go to text, insert filler text with your cursor, of course, in the place where you want the filler text to appear. And when you click on insert filler text, it will fill the text frame with random with random text. Overset text shows the red marks and you can see I've got them highlight here, meaning there is too much text for the frame. It's flowed over, what's well, it's outside the frame. It's there, but you can't see it. So creating columns of text and dividing text frames into two columns, select the frame text tool in the toolbox with the frame text tool selected, drag in the document window to add a text frame to the document. With the text cursor in the text frame by default, type your text. Now in the next two slides, slide one shows your choose view studio text frame and slide two set the number of columns to two and set balance columns to balance the paragraphs of text. There are other options you can set as you need them. Now there's slide one, view studio text frame. That shows you your text frame. And then the text frame panel. You can see that there. And the little spy glasses, the little magnifying glasses are showing you the two options. That's where you set the columns to two and balance the columns balance text in columns so that you don't get odd shapes and sizes in those columns. You might like to play with that a little bit and have a good look at the help file. If you go into the help file, search for text frame panel and it will bring that up. It's very useful. Never forget the text file. <laughs> now importing text, I've done a whole a separate video on this much earlier and it's there on YouTube if you want to look for it. The text can be pasted, dragged or placed into a document from an outside source, such as Microsoft Word. Text can be placed in an existing text frame or in a frame that publisher created when placing the text. Choose File Place to place a text file such as Documents from Word, RTF or Text Depending on the file type, you may be able to set options, such as removing the formatting. Click to place the text in an existing text frame, or click and click drag to have publisher create a text frame. See the following slide. You can also, when you're done, select view, preview mode, to see the document, to see how it looks, without those guidelines in it. Now here we go, file and place, the same as images. You select file and place, it will come up with a, with a directory listing 
and you look for your file, select the file and it will place it in your document. Now this is another Affinity Publisher help extract. I won't read through that but it's sufficient to say that it's saying much the same thing. From the file menu you've got importing text to import text into an empty text frame. Just give you a moment to read through that and you can always pause the video if you want to read it clearly or in fact you can look in the help menu on importing text. Now flowing text between frames which I mentioned a moment ago you can connect text frames so that text flows between them. This is called threading text. Text frames or flowing text. Text frames have an import and an output that are used to connect text frames and also visualize any connections. A red plus in the output indicates that text doesn't fit in the frame and this is called, as I mentioned before, overset text. To thread text or to flow text with the selection tool click the select the text frame and then click the output or import to load a text cursor but for this moment Select the output. Position the loaded text cursor within an existing text frame and click to thread the text or drag to create a new text frame. So if you haven't got a new text frame on a new page for example, click and drag a text frame and the loaded text will flow into it automatically. And if you've got your settings right, you can automatically create as many pages as you need. So if you've got an entire 500 page document you want to load automatically before you try and thread these pages, thread this text into those pages, find the option that allows you to create pages automatically. And I'll show you that possibly in the video, but I think it's already in the one I've done previously. Click on a text frame to see the threads between the frames. Now, if you, if you like, see my previous video on this very subject, Affinity Publisher and Auto Flow Text into a document. It goes to, into it in a lot of detail, more than I want to put into this short exercise. There's your output I've mentioned, and I've clicked on the frame, and you can see that the, it's telling me that the text in the top is threaded with the frame on the bottom half of the window. So that's an option you can use or not use. And of course, if you've got a long story, you want it to continue over the pages. You can see in the left-hand side, there's nothing on the master page. It's all on page one. Now that's the end of this little exercise. The screen video follows. That's a video capture of the preceding steps, all done on Affinity Publisher as I go through the steps.